In this video, I'm going to show you how you can very quickly get up and running uh, doing pre-registrations and ticketing for your services, which means that you can manage your capacity limits and keep track of everyone who's coming in and out of the building and things like that. So uh, to start with, on the left-hand side, I'm going to click Events and then Event Tracks. And here I can set up a new event track, which is basically the template for our events that are going to keep repeating. I'm going to call this the Sunday 10 a.m. service um, and on the left I'm going to click uh, event defaults and I'm just going to make sure that that time is 10 a.m. you can change that to whatever time you need it to be um, and I'm going to click ticket defaults on the left and here I'm going to tick enable public ticketing and I'm going to click add ticket type I'm going to add an adult ticket so we'll do a limit of a hundred in our auditorium I'm going to add a child's ticket and we're going to say we're allowed 50 uh, children at this point in time. And overall, uh, so I'm just going to change that. I'm going to change the capacity limit of we're allowed 100 people in the building overall. So for any ticket, we're allowed a maximum of 100. Um, but for adult tickets, uh, we're allowed 100. Kids are only allowed 50. Um, and we can say, you know, thanks for, for registering. Um, and we can add a token in there. We'll just add the, the person's first name. Thanks for registering. And I'm going to click Auto Create. Here I'm going to tick this to be on. I'm going to say we want five events in the future, starting from today. And I want them to be a service, not just a normal event. Every week on Sunday at 10 a.m. And uh, we want this to be, sorry, five, five future events. And we're going to click Save. And now what that's going to do is uh, just in here, uh, if I go to events, uh, you'll see it's created those events. And now each time one of these events finishes, another one's going to come up uh, five weeks ahead, and it'll just keep creating them for us. So we've got all of our um, all of our services there. Now I'm going to show you how you can set up the form for people to register. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to click apps, and then websites, and we're going to click new websites. And I'm actually just going to choose the public ticketing template. So I'm going to click that. And you'll see this comes up, and look, there's our 10 a.m. services ready to go. I can test this out and click, you know, 100 seats available. And we've got, you know, person one, adult, uh, person two, person three, um, etc. cetera, um, child. Uh, we can type in all their details. And on the left-hand side, uh, I've got some options of, like, do I only want to show particular events? Um, how many events at a time do we want to show? Like we may only want to show the next week's event, which means when you get here, you'll actually uh, you'll actually only get the the single event. So um, you can't you can't register weeks in advance. Um, and we can also tick: do we want to require an address? Like do we need their address details or not? Um, yeah. And once we've got all of that, uh, we can now click save, and we'll just click save and publish. We'll call this our ticketing uh, website. Um, we can change the colors and designs and do a whole bunch of other stuff if we want in the future as well, but I'm just going to create that. And now I'm going to click domains. I'm just going to create a new application. Uh, here we can add our own custom domain if we want, or I can just leave this uh, as just a generic Fluro one. I'm going to click continue. Uh, we also want to give it some permissions. So I'm just going to choose uh, the public website visitor permission. I'm going to click add and we're going to click save. And now if I click domains up here, we can now visit our website and oh, I'm just going to go back here and click save and publish first. We'll just do that and we'll refresh our website. And there, there we go. There is, there is our event. We can register a ticket. We can say, my name is Cade and Cadefluro.io and we'll put in a phone number. I'll add another person. Oops. And we'll choose child. We'll choose kid. Embry, kid. .io. Put in a number. We click register and bang, that's, uh, that's done. People have now registered. And if we go back to our uh, admin panel, let's get out of the website thing. We'll go to events, and we can go to all events. And just here, we can actually see there's now two tickets registered for this event. So if you click this event, we can see our registrations and tickets. And we now have had two of these tickets. Um, 
and we have one adult ticket, one child ticket, and there's you can see that capacity has gone down. And if we go down here, we can actually see the first and last name of each of these um, people. We can export all of these tickets, things like that. Uh, but what I'm also going to show you is if I click this ticket here, um, we've also got this QR code. So that will have actually been sent to the uh, registrant and all your team needs to do is just point their iPhone camera uh, when the person rocks up. They just point their iPhone camera at this, uh, at this uh, QR code and once they've done that, um, it'll just prompt them to check in and you're off and away, you can check people in. So now I'm going to show you that in a second video um, about how to check in tickets.